Iodo actual service. In today's video I'll be showing you how to make and wear a rectangle cloak. I'll admit this video is a little bit of a con because it's not so much how to make a rectangle cloak as it is how to wear one. Hence I said that it would be easy enough to do in a forest. Here's why. The first thing you'll need is of course fabric. Now I'll show you how to work out how much fabric in a minute. But for now, this is what I've got. The second thing you'll need is some kind of pin. Now I have a kilt pin because it works. But any kind of pin that's relatively sturdy that will go through whatever fabric you're using will work. Now the third thing you'll need is a needle and thread. That's optional, you'll find out why at the end of the video. The style of cloak that I'm going to show you how to make is a kind of rectangle cloak that uses quite a small piece of fabric. Now, I've seen Viking and Iron Age reenactors using this style before. I'm not claiming to be historically accurate, it's just what I've seen at fairs and such. The best way to determine what size of fabric you need, you're not going to get a choice about the width. This is a 60 inch roll of fabric, so it's 60 inches wide. But the length is the critical aspect. Of course, the size of fabric you use is purely up to you and there's no right or wrong answer but the size that I find best is so that when you wrap it over your shoulder holding the short end of fabric vertically and you hold a corner and then you cross that across your shoulder and pinch it that the back edge dangles almost to your ankle. For me that works out at exactly a metre so it's nice and cheap and easy to buy but if you're taller than me it might be a little bit longer than a metre. Just another thing to add that I almost forgot, what material is best for cloaks? Well, throughout most of history the most common material used for cloaks is wool, so it's no surprise that I find that wool is actually one of the best materials you can make a cloak out of. It gives you the best protection from the weather and the best protection from the rain and the best warmth. And of course don't forget that wool is still warm when it's wet so it will still keep you warm even if it gets soaked through. But one thing that helps prevent it from getting soaked through is if you choose a nice thick high density weave wool so you can't see much light through this at all if you hold it up to the light and this is woven so honestly something like a boiled wool would actually be better and if it was a boiled wool it wouldn't fray so you wouldn't have to hem it more on that at the end of the video you've got your fabric and you've got your pin so i'll show you how to wear a rectangle cloak the rectangle cloak is a very versatile style of cloak and there's an awful lot of different ways to wear one. That's the main reason I like them. In fact, that's the reason that the rectangle cloak is, for me, one of my two favourite ways of wearing a cloak. If you want to see a video about my other favourite type of cloak, comment below. This is the most often seen way of wearing a rectangle cloak in fantasy costumes where you literally just put the long edge of the fabric over your shoulder and pin it at your chest. Now this works very well and it's quite practical. If you've got a pack on then it will cover your pack and it will keep your pack dry but there are a few reasons why I don't like it. The main one is it doesn't keep your front very dry but what you can do is you can turn it round and you can put the pin on your shoulder and that gives you quite good coverage front and back and helps keep your clothing dry. If it's windy you can actually tie it there and you can tuck it in your belt. So that gives you relatively good protection from the weather. But the only problem is with it, you don't have very good access to this hand. So what I prefer to do instead is to take the corner like I did before when showing you how to work out how much fabric to use and then pin the corner to the long edge of the cloak at the shoulder. What you have then is your front is open but you have good access to your hands and it keeps your shoulders dry and you can change it if the weather gets worse. And the only other thing that might be worth mentioning is the back dangles very close to the ground so you might have to tuck the back into your belt if you want to walk through forest and undergrowth and such. Now what if it's a hot day, not a cold day? Well, 
the best thing you can do then is you can pin the cloak under your arm like that and then much more of your top half is in open air so you'll stay cooler for longer and then if it, you can flick the whole cloak so that it's on your back here's another quite interesting and different way of wearing a cloak that you don't see demonstrated often you take the short edge and you put it over your head so I have it folded there Then I tie a piece of string around my waist so it looks kind of like a skirt. And then the excess fabric that I collected before, I'll put round my neck and then pin. Very much like we did before with the um, typical costume way of wearing a cloak. So now it kind of resembles a wizard's robe. And honestly, this is brilliant in terrible weather because it keeps you very warm and very dry. What if you want to carry some stuff? Well, this is the horseshoe blanket roll method. What I've done here is I've spread the cloak out on the floor and I've put some things inside it and then I've rolled it up like a sausage and then tied it together with some rope. So, I've actually got my shelter tarp inside here and it's actually an incredibly comfortable way to carry a load. But with this cloak it doesn't work quite so well as it would with an actual blanket because it could do with being a little bit longer. That's about all of the ways I can think of of wearing a rectangle cloak. It's certainly all of the ways that I've used. But if you happen to know any more interesting ways to wear a cloak, please let me know in the comments. And with that, there's one final thing left. Many reenactors, history and fantasy alike, have different opinions about whether you should hem a cloak or not. The main reason to say that you shouldn't is that if you roll the fabric over at the edge, then it gets wet, water collects in that, and it increases the weight and it makes it dry much more slowly. However, I have the opinion that if the cloak is made out of a woven fabric that can unravel, I'm pretty sure this has already started unraveling, there you go then you should definitely hem a cloak because otherwise it will just keep on unravelling and it will end up all frayed. So I choose to hem cloaks. It's at this point that I actually regret saying that I could make it in a forest because it means I'll have to end up doing this in a forest. Never mind. Thanks very much for watching and see you in the next video.